Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to the third in CSW Group series of short webinars, My Choices. So this is an online program that we are offering to uh, young people in a wide range of educational situations, both those who are in mainstream schools and colleges and also those who are home educated. Um, each session will be looking at a different area of career development and employability. Uh, we are aiming to make these as interactive as possible, so if anyone listening um, has any questions or any points they'd like to raise, please do type them in and I will make sure we have some time to deal with those at the end. Um, so today you'll be hearing from me, Dr Oliver Jenkin. Um, I am a career development consultant at CSW Group and we're going to be um, talking about what employers look for in an employee. So this is what I'm going to try and cover for you today. Firstly, we're going to think about employability. So that's a word that will come up again and again this week in different contexts. So we're going to be thinking about what do we actually mean by that? What is employability? What does it mean to be employable? We're also going to be uh, revisiting something that my colleague Mike talked about yesterday, which is the difference between skills and qualities. We all have uh, various skills. Uh, we've got personal qualities. They're all important for employability and finding work. But what's the difference between those two things? We're also going to be looking at the skills and qualities that employers most often want. So we all have things which we can offer to employers, we all have things which are valuable, but is it the case that there are some skills that employers tend to look for a little bit more often than others? And lastly, it's going to be thinking about how we can develop the skills that employers want. So all of our skills are things which we're learning and developing, they don't ever stay still, as we'll hear in a moment. They're things that we can work on, we can improve. So if we find, for instance, that there's a particular skill that employers like to see and we feel we need to work on it, well, the good news is that we can. So what do we mean by employability then? Well, essentially, employability means the skills and qualities that will help us find and keep a job. So it's something that we all can do and it's something that we can all work towards because all of us have lots of useful skills, and personal qualities. Um, some of these are things that we innately have and some of them are things that we learn along the way, but we can always learn more skills and we can always um, further develop our personal qualities. But it is a good idea to try and take the time to get to know what exactly employers are looking for. Um, because if we do know that, that's very useful information because it can help us become more employable. Employers um, want the people who can uh, meet their skills needs, who can do the task they need them to do. So we really need to know how we can convince them that we have got those skills and qualities that, we're, that they are looking for. So, OK, then, what's a skill and what's a personal quality? Well, a skill, generally speaking, is something that we learn through education, work, or just our general day-to-day -day life experience. So it's, just, it's something that we can be taught. It's something that we, we can learn in lots and lots of different situations. And examples of skills, well, there's many, many skills that we could learn, but it could be things like teamwork, um, working with others as a group, uh, maybe to complete a project, or it might be that in... Um, in our sporting life, if we play sports, we might learn good teamwork skills. Problem solving is an excellent skill. Um, learning how to um, approach difficult tasks or how to find the solution to problems, how to fix things too. Computer skills. Most of us will need to use computers to some extent in our jobs today because more than 90% of all the jobs out there do need computers. And some people feel more confident with them than others, but most of us really can learn new skills and develop the skills we already have when we're working with ICT. And also anything that involves manual tools or kind of practical work. Those are quite good examples of what we mean when we're talking about skills. So by contrast, um, a personal quality, um, that's more about our personality. That's more about those things about us that we naturally have, we might to some extent be born with them or we just develop them 
not because anyone's really taught us, but it's just something about our personality and who we are that develops as we grow up. But even then, um, we can develop our personal qualities too. So I would say, or I would suggest that um, things like our confidence, um, our ability to be patient when we're tackling a task, uh, our resilience, so we heard a lot about resilience yesterday, so that ability to keep sticking at it when things are difficult or things are hard, or creativity, if we're a creative person. That's not just artistic, visual creativity, but you know, having really clever ideas sometimes. Now, all of these things are quite tricky to learn. They can be developed, but I would sort of describe these as our personal qualities. So our skills and our qualities are things we need to be aware of if we want to be employable. So what is it that employers are actually looking for? So at this point, it uh, seems to make sense to actually listen to employers and see what they are saying they are looking for in new employees. applicant we'd be looking for somebody that is naturally caring uh, is interested in learning lots of different skills about lots of different ailments and, and maybe illnesses that people may have in older life um, somebody that can work alongside a team or work on their own initiative we're looking for um, good communication skills we're looking for somebody that can demonstrate empathy that can really build a relationship with, um, obviously, with our patients, with their families and their, their carers. I think the big thing we, we look for is, is people skills, uh, technical abilities in there as well, but it's, it's how you interact with the people. For people who go into space science industries, the most important skill that they need to have is problem solving. And that's got to be linked with them being an independent inquirer. We've solved the problems that we've got now, but it's the future problems that we don't know the solution to that we want our young people to be working on through their careers. And you won't know what to do and you won't know where to go. But that's the time when you don't just give up or go off and ask somebody else. But you sit there and use the knowledge that you picked up in all of your subjects at school to help you solve those problems. Obviously, it's important to have a good educational background. Um, it's not the most important thing, though. Really, what we're moving towards at Santon Dare is more behavioural. So the values, the manners and the behaviours of the individual that we bring in. I think really for me it is being agile, being able to work with change, being able to embrace change positively and uh, move different environments, the ability and the adaptability to move to different skills. You know, we're seeing these huge technological advances in our industry and we need students coming in who who can work in that environment, that they're, you know, they're IT literate, they, um, they, they can research uh, these trends and the way things are progressing. We're talking about drones, having our parcels delivered by drones, you know, so that, that in itself is a whole sphere that, you know, should be interesting to, to anyone that um, has an interest in transportation, computers, uh, anything of that nature. So you know, it's just a really, really exciting time to be involved in logistics. Okay, so that was fascinating. So we heard um, employers there um, talking from lots of different industries. So we started by hearing people who were working in kind of the caring sector, um, kind of caring and health type roles. We had somebody from construction. There was uh, somebody who works in the space industry and also someone from banking and a person who works in logistics. So logistics, if you haven't heard that word before, is um, getting all of our goods and things from one place to another. So if you go into Tesco's, if you go into one of the big supermarkets, logistics is about how all of those products get into the shop and how, how to make sure it's the right products. So you might um, look at this screen in front of us and notice some of the skills that those employers were talking about. They did at, at times talk about technical skills, didn't they? So they talked about some kind of technical ability for certain roles. That could be, for example, computer skills or in a different kind of work, it could be kind of being skilled with tools, perhaps. They also said that 
having a decent level of education was quite important. So that would be our general qualifications, certainly maths and English for most roles, I would say too. But I've found it interesting how with lots of them, the same kind of skills would come up in different contexts. So for example, several of them talked about problem solving, um, or they might've talked about like an analytical thinking skills, communication skills, getting on well with other people came up quite a bit. And you might also have noticed them talking about one that isn't mentioned here, which is adaptability. So being able to adapt, being able to settle into new situations or deal with new challenges, that's something that's very linked to the resilience that we were talking about yesterday. And lots of those skills aren't particularly technical, are they? Those are ones that we might have or not have to varying degrees, but there are things, they are things that if we're aware of, we can improve and work on. So hopefully this is beginning to give you a bit more of a sense of what the skills are that employers are looking for. And in terms of personal qualities, well, we heard some of those too. So um, the people who work in the caring sector were really talking about um, obviously being caring. Um, I think being considerate of other people, getting on with other people was mentioned quite a few times. But I think we can see here, and there's adaptability actually, um, we can see lots and lots of other qualities that um, people will want to see in very various different roles. Um, most employers would want to see people being conscientious and hardworking, really, really doing their best, um, giving their all, being as enthusiastic as they can, um, hopefully being passionate about what they want to do too. Equally, just like in education, most employers will want to know that their employees can be trusted to do their jobs, that they're trustworthy, um, that they um, have creative ideas when they need to, when, that they can be outgoing with other people when they need to. Now, not all of us um, might feel that we are outgoing all the time. Some of us are maybe a little bit more um, like what we would call an introverted person. We sometimes need to look after ourselves and be by ourselves. We don't always naturally feel like we can be outgoing. But as long as you know how to be outgoing when you need to be, that's the most important thing. And it's something that we can, we can do something towards improving if we need it for the job we want to do. So how do you Im improve our skills and qualities? Well, there's a lot of different ways in which you could do this. So volunteering, which we will um, hear about later in the week, is an excellent way of developing some of the skills that you need in the workplace. And that's really because volunteering is work. The only difference between a voluntary job and any other kind of job is simply whether or not you're being paid. And the fact that as a volunteer, you have chosen to give up your time for the organisation you're working for, whether that's um, maybe a charity shop or whether that is, um, you know, walking animals for pe elderly people or whether that is sort of doing gardening or improving your local environment. All of the skills you're developing, though, are real skills and they're skills that can be developed that are translatable into other workplaces. Team sports are also excellent ways of developing our skills. So I mentioned earlier on, um, you know, if we are working as part of a team, that can develop our awareness of other people. We, we can learn how to work together to achieve a goal. We can learn to be aware of what our other teammates need. There is also a lot of great communication that goes on in team sports too. Hobbies are brilliant. So if we have a hobby, then we can learn all sorts of different skills. So if any of you are artistically creative, if you do anything creative in your own spare time, well, that, those are useful skills for any job that involves visual creativity. If you like making and fixing things, maybe you like tinkering with your family member's car, or maybe you like tinkering with um, your bicycle or something, the kind of thinking skills you're developing there are really, really important. And they will allow, they will be skills that can be um, applied in lots and lots of other situations too. Helping friends and family members is equally as important, really, I would say, as any other kind of voluntary work. Now, there's lots and lots of different ways in which this can happen. So if any of you have done any babysitting for family members, 
um, that is developing your responsibility. That is showing that you can be entrusted with different tasks, um, that you're capable and that you're reliable. You might help family members with DIY projects at home. You might um, build some furniture. You might help a family member with repairs, perhaps. These are all very useful technical skills that might be applicable in lots of practical jobs. And any general work experience at all, any other kind of situation in which you're developing a skill is something that means that you're developing something that's transferable. All of this, this is the, the main point I really want to get across, I suppose, that any skill that you develop, whatever situation you've developed it in, is transferable. It doesn't just belong in the original situation. You can transfer it anywhere else you like. And also don't forget, if there is a skill you need, but you don't feel that you have it, you can always learn them. Um, you might want to improve your cooking skills if any of you are thinking of working in the hospitality and catering industry. You may have fancy working in, in IT. You may want to have a go at co computer coding. Well, the good news is there's lots of courses, including completely free courses, that you can do to give you some of these skills. And you might also have an interest or a hobby that you're very passionate about and you want to tell people about. And that could be through a YouTube channel, it could be through blogging. That is an excellent way of demonstrating your communication skills. Now, that is not a complete list of all of the ways in which you can improve your skills and develop your qualities, but I hope it gives you some ideas to start with at least. So it's dead important that we know about our skills and our qualities, but we also do need to have a bit of an awareness of the general expectations that our employer has of us when we go into a workplace. Um, some of the expectations might be a bit similar to the expectations we have in school, but some of them will be different. So first things first, um, most employers will have what we kind of call a dress code. So in other words, there will be an expectation of how you're meant to be dressed. So check what you're expected to wear. Um, if you can, maybe speak to people who work at the workplace or ask them in the job interview. You know, you're probably going to need to wear different kinds of clothes if you work in a, a, I don't know, a garage or a warehouse or something compared with if you worked in an office or, or if you worked in a supermarket. But do double check and um, if you're unsure, the safest thing is probably to dress more smartly. Be on time, uh, be punctual. Uh, employers are relying on you, so it's very, very important that you arrive and work at, on time and as much as you can complete your tasks on time. Other people are relying on you to do this, so that's a very, very important thing to be aware of. Be keen, be enthusiastic. Um, I mentioned those qualities a moment ago, but um, employers have chosen to give you the job, but they don't have to keep you in the job if they don't feel you're keen enough or enthusiastic enough. They want to see that their employee, employees um, are trying their hardest, that they care about the company, that they care about their customers, whatever it might happen to be. So you do need to be aware of putting in the right energy and being positive at work too. Be polite and respectful to others. I hope that's a simple one. I hope that's what most of you would expect, but the best thing to do is to treat other people as you would like them to treat you. I hope this one's obvious, but look after your personal hygiene. If you've got to work alongside other people and you've got to be in um, close space to them, then it's very, very important that you're making sure that you're washing, that your clothes are washed, and that, generally speaking, you are taking proper care of your personal hygiene. That's the thing that will be expected in most workplaces. And this last one is, is also important, and I think I mentioned this in the talk about resilience yesterday, but there's going to be times when you're in the workplace and you won't know what to do. You will feel stuck. Uh, you might not quite remember how you were told how to do something. And that is perfectly normal. It's a perfectly normal experience. And it's actually important for us to be able to learn. But from the employer's point of view, that's OK. But if you don't know what you want to do, ask for help. They would much, much rather you did that than sort of suffer in silence, not knowing what you want to do, because that is how you might make a mistake otherwise. And lastly, but very importantly, 
both before you apply for your job and while you're in your work, be very careful what you post on social media. Um, social media is very easily accessed, even if you do your best to make it private and to look after your settings. Um, anything you post can be in the public domain, and if you if you post something inappropriate, that can reflect badly on you, but it could also reflect badly on your employer. Um, we know um, that employers do check people, potential applicant social media feeds when they're hiring. That could be a Facebook feed, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. They do sometimes check what their employees are posting too. So be very, very careful of this. And if, in, if you're in any doubt about what you're posting, don't post it. Always be mindful that you can't always control where it will end up. So, okay, so where can you get more support with career skills and employability? So there's a few ideas here. Um, if any of you listening live in the Southwest region in Devon or Cornwall, then um, we can help you. We're CSW Group. Um, we might already be present in your school or college, um, in which case um, speak to your um, careers leader in your school and you can access career support or if it isn't us then there will be another form of support available to you I'm sure. Anybody listening who is home educated um, I just want to let you know that um, anybody listening in that situation is entitled to a one-to-one -one careers guidance interview with us and if you would like to receive that support um, do contact us through our website. Uh, the Career Pilot website is a very good uh, young person friendly site looking at um, different areas of career development, employability, uh, labour market information too. iCOD is a wonderful website if, a bit like me, you sometimes like to learn through watching things on YouTube videos. I'm quite the visual learner. For me, that works best. So if you think that you would learn about job, different areas of work um, better by listening to people, maybe a bit like that video we watched in this webinar, then iCOD is a great website to use for that. I um, have to mention the National Career Service website. Um, it's, it's got lots and lots of jobs, hundreds and hundreds of job information there. So it's very comprehensive. Um, lots of information there about how to get through a job interview, how to do a CV. Um, so lots of advice about employability there too. And uh, lastly there, for any of you who are thinking about doing an apprenticeship, um, I highly recommend the National Apprenticeship Service website. Okay, so I'm just having a look at the Q&A box. Um, not noticing any questions there, but if anyone has any questions, um, do type them in while I'm talking, and if there is time permitting, I will deal with those at the end. Um, so I hope that this has been a useful session for you. Now, there will be a feedback questionnaire in a moment, and if you can offer some feedback, we would very much appreciate this. Um, if any of you would like to come to our next session, if you're able to do that, that's this afternoon at three o'clock p.m. and it's entitled Applying for a Job, What to Expect from the Application and Interview Process. So once we understand how to be employable, the next thing we need to do is understand what we practically need to do when we're actually doing an application and what's gonna happen when we're being interviewed. And that will be my colleague, Karen Crosby, who will be delivering that session. So thank you all very much for attending. Um, we hope you enjoyed this session and we very much look forward to you attending our future sessions this week.